time? Hey, we got the thumbs up. It is time. So uh, no Steve Roberts, no Gary. So you get us. Uh, so you're going to have to put up with me with, I mean, I'm praying and I'm leading singing and I'm preaching. By the end, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to speak. So you know what that means? I am going to need Culver's desperately. Something cold to soothe the thing. But till then, we're starting out with 589. I love this song. It says, hey, I'm here, Lord, and I want to be used by you. So here we go. Here I am, Lord, 589. Oh, Steve always says, wait, sorry. It's the 10th of September. <laughs> so years from now, people will go that back and they'll go, oh, 2023. A hundred years from now, they could see us and go, who are those guys up there? Tomorrow's 9-11. Tomorrow's 9-11, that's right. How many years? That was 2001? Okay. Wow. All right, sorry, uh, Joey, for my... Uh, you're going to have to put up with that tonight because I'm not, as, I'm not as disciplined as Roberts is. I get sidetracked and I'm, you know, so I apologize in advance. You okay? Probably think I should have stayed home tonight too, aren't you? All right, here we go. Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall
great song. Now, a couple things. Now, Jody, I know you're a little shy, but this is where you shine on this song. Mm -hmm. Like that opening thing there, boom! <laughs> I, the Lord, and you wait for that next one, boom, again. The next one, crank that volume up. And... It's exciting. <laughs> oh, she does a marvelous job. This is, her, this is her time to shine. That note plays and nobody's singing. And all eyes to the penis. <laughs> you know, Everybody, is, there's uh, been a song going around on the internet that has become very popular with people. And uh, if you haven't heard it, they're all saying that it's, it's the anthem that the country needs. It's kind of a, a song against the government. And as I hear people talking about an anthem, guys, this is the anthem for believers. Because this song says, listen, the Lord has heard the people's cry. Those who dwell in deepest sin, my hand wants to save them. I made the stars of the night. I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom will I send? And then the response of the corpse is, here I am, Lord. You're literally saying, I realize that this world is in deep trouble. You have the answer. And God standing up there says, who is going to bring my light to them? We need an army of believers saying, here I am, Lord, send me. And that's the problem. Churches aren't talking enough about the fact that that world is lost and they, the people sitting there, should be standing up saying, here I am, Lord, who should I reach? And so it's a song that we should sing often, but then ask ourselves, do we really feel this way? Uh, we just got done with a Living Proof meeting downstairs and we're looking forward to another year of reaching the kids. We've got a team of people who are willing to say, here I am, Lord. Uh, help me reach the kids. Uh, I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. We look at the crowds, the kids that come, the people who are outside there, holding them in our hearts. We're broken for them, their lost condition, and we want to do what we can to reach them. So a great anthem for believers today. Lord, thank you so much uh, for this song, which really comes right out of the Old Testament. But it becomes more personal for us. The world is lost. Who is going to send the light to them? And in the end, who? It's not going to be the angels. God the Father and Jesus are not coming down. They left us here to do the job. And so the response for the chorus is, the world is lost. Who's going to send the light? And then in response, we say, here I am, Lord. We pray that it'll always be true for us as a church, and not only that, but us as individuals as we look at the world around us and we think of ways that we can reach them. Great song, Lord. Thank you for uh, uh, allowing us to start with that tonight. Bless us throughout the service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. 583. I didn't pick any of these songs. These were picked by Roberts. I don't even know what they are until we get there. It's a surprise. You are my all in all. A little wild today, I apologize. I don't know why. I didn't have a lot of caffeine, but it's okay. I'm just wound up. I'm hot too. Feeling good. It is warm. Sweaty. It is you're yeah. warm too. I want to make sure it just wasn't me. Because then I'm thinking, what's wrong? No, it's you me. Because know, this is the season now, you know. It's a flu season. I'm sorry. It's, we might not get out of here until eight. Playing. I apologize. <laughs> sorry, Jody. Jody's thinking, if he's leading again, I'm staying home. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Howard I'm sick. Uh, 583, I'm ready now. Jody. Boom. You're my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my
74. A Child of the King. secretary too thank you and uh, Howard make sure too for the next two songs that this mic is really down low and that mic is really up high <laughs> all right what's going on tonight well, we had our living proof meeting we got the year planned out all the things that we're doing with the kids we try to get a variety of things so each week they don't come here and we're doing the same thing so uh, all kinds of exciting things planned with crafts and uh, this year or last year we did an actual Pinewood Derby this year we're going to do a full out Hot Wheels race, uh, but not as much of a race as how far your car can go. We're going to have a long track and see how it goes, and, and uh, kind of we're excited about that. That's the kind of thing we invite the parents to, so hoping for a great year, and then of course you're here for tonight. We're going to go out to Culver's afterwards. Busy week now starting here. Homeschoolers are in the building. They started last Tuesday. They're here most of the day. The day. They get here early in the morning. They're not leave till about five in the afternoon. And then Wednesday morning, the ladies' Bible study begins. That's at 10 o'clock, and I think it goes to 11.30 or so. And then in the evening, a midweek recharge. We're in our lesson books, and we're finishing up lesson number six. Might get into lesson number seven. 
uh, handicap ramp and update. Uh, we're tearing it down this week, and I did get confirmation Isaiah will be here sometime Wednesday. Uh, so I figure if Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, we take the railings off. So then he could come in with the skid steer and do his thing. No, nope. dumpster's coming Tuesday night, but I figure he's going to take most of it apart with the skid steer, but we got to get the railings off. So he's going to be here sometime Wednesday. So, uh, but the dumpster should be here Tuesday night. So. So that's what's going on. We're taking the ramp apart this week, and then next week we're putting holes in and putting the uprights in, and then we're going to get the framework done. So the following uh, Saturday, the 23rd, you can come in. We're, have they got to bring like their, the drills that they got for Christmas that they never used. So men, it's finally a chance for you to use those drills that have been sitting there. Uh, bring them in, and we have some Trek top boards, so we'll be screwing them into the, uh, to the frame that we're going to put up. So that'll be on the 23rd. Looking forward to that. And uh, uh, it'll be a great day for us here on that day. And uh, uh, also, I mentioned if you happen to be a book reader, I just got done reading that book, Jesus Revolution. Uh, if you like to read, it's both in a Kindle format, plus you can get a hard format. Uh, it was a great book, an easy read, uh, but you, I just couldn't stop reading because God was just blessing and things were happening. This was kind of the Jesus movement when a lot of hippies were coming to faith. And this is about a church in California that opened up their doors to people that wouldn't normally be allowed into a building and how God blessed that and how that movement continued for many years after that. So uh, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed the book better because it filled in some of the backstory uh, that the movie didn't. So uh, my suggestion is you pick that book up and read it. Um, some things on the front, keep praying for Ray. Both Tony's mom and Cheryl had uh, work on their back and neck, so that means they got screws and pins and plates uh, and they did that to get a reduction in pain, but they're still not feeling uh, that. <laughs> so we're just asking that things will heal and the pain will go away. It's good to see Nora this morning. She's looking good. Uh, and so considering she was in the hospital the week before and didn't know anybody, um, this is a real answer to prayer, a real recovery. So now we're just praying that they can figure out what it was. Because whenever there's the unknown, you're always thinking, is this thing coming back again? I know that's with my leg when it acts up. I am immobile, and I'm always I'm praying it's never going to happen again, but when they don't find an answer in the back of your mind, it's like, when's the next thing going to come? So I'm sure that's what's going on with her. I told you Mr. Roberts is traveling in Michigan this week. Next week he's going out to the East Coast to visit Alexander and his new grandson, so I pray for him as he's doing all that driving. And then Living Proof, uh, we're starting up, what do we say, October 17th, I think is the first week uh, we're starting, so be praying for that. Anything else going on? Everybody doing okay? I saw you, listen, your mom's got a birthday coming up. 84? 86. 86, okay. So mom's 86, so uh, good to see that. A uh, little party going on. So, All right, let's have a word of prayer for these things. Lord, thank you so much for each week coming into your presence. I know sometimes maybe people are tuning in and wondering why we keep praying for these same things. Because sometimes we're praying for people that are in a storm. And storms don't just last a day. I think Ray and Tracy, they've been dealing with this for years. Uh, and so we just pray, Lord, that you'll continue to watch over them. And more than anything, especially when we're going through things for a long time, I know with Cheryl, she's had multiple surgeries. One of the things that's hanging in the background is this idea of getting discouraged because I had another surgery. Well, I have to have another one. And so not only do we pray for healing, but we just pray that you'll give them the emotional support and encouragement to get through it. We think of that passage in Philippians that says, cast our cares upon you, be anxious for nothing, and then it talks about you giving us this peace that we can't explain, a, a peace that passes understanding. A lot of the folks that we're praying for need that as much as they need the physical healing. So we pray for those that are not only going through deep waters physically, but the emotional uh, things that are attached to it. Encourage them and carry them through these things, especially Ray and Tracy when it's been going on for a long time. Thank you for Nora being here this morning. And now, Lord, we just pray especially that the doctors will find out what caused this so they can get to the bottom of it and then it won't happen again. And so pray that you watch over her and protect her, uh, that you won't have another one of these episodes until the doctors can get to the bottom of it. Pray for our dear friend Steve. Pray that he'll have a great vacation with his daughter and then a great time out with his son and his grandson. And watch over his car, no flats, no car problems. 
uh, just get him to these places and then back to us again in a couple weeks, Lord. Thank you so much for his spirit and his ministry here and leading the singing and really leading us. Um, and we're just so thankful for him. So watch over and protect him. And then living proof, Lord, we thank you so much for um, this year that we've got planned out now. And just pray it'll be a year of uh, wonderful growth in the lives of these kids, that, that the ones that don't know you will come to know you, and the ones that have already have accepted you, that as the year progresses, that we'll see them grow a little bit deeper in their faith. So we thank you for that. And then, Lord, this project coming up here, this handicap ramp is such a big part of our church. Uh, as the folks are getting older, uh, we need that for getting people in here. And so uh, we just pray that things will go smoothly, taking it apart, putting it back up, and that it'll last us another 20 years when we're done, uh, that we won't have to worry about it. So pray for all the people involved, uh, that things will go smoothly. And so all these things, Lord, we leave in your hands, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 548. Let's see what it is. It's a surprise. Don't tell me. Do you have these memorized yet? Oh, let me think. Let me think. It's as the deer pants for the water. I should do that. People would know, see? So you had to point to the TV, otherwise I could have pulled it off. Oh, okay. Next week. They'll have forgotten by next week. Next uh, Here's another one. I got to say something. Sorry, Jody. Whenever we sang this at church, I didn't like this song. It was way too slow for me. Until you get a little bit older and you understand this idea of how thirsty the deer is and how desperately it has to get to the water, it's a reminder that you and I should feel that way about the Word of God. And I fear that so many believers today don't feel this way. Uh, if they come home from church and they put that Bible away and they don't look at it till the next week, it doesn't bother them. This song says, no, as that deer is, how it can't control itself, it wants to get to that water as it pants for the water. We should feel that same way about the Word of God. I know you guys do. You're here on a Sunday night when you could be at home doing nothing or getting projects done around the house. I appreciate that you're here because I know that you love the Word, and this is a great song. Thank you, Jody. Go ahead. As the deer panted for the water so She 
16, we're marching to Zion. Okay, I picked this one up. Ready? Ready to march? Ready. Okay. <laughs> do that. We'll leave my, my, it will give my voice a prayer. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. So obviously Operation Christmas Child's coming up. What night are we going to do it? Of November. So November the 13th, we're going to do our normal thing when we put the, uh, the, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's going to be a long night for preaching. <laughs> I mean, Karen, I just may give you a, a microphone next time <laughs> for, for, for when I mess up. You know, 13th of October. November. Thank you. Oh, that's a Monday? So maybe the 12th? That sounds good. The 12th. October 12th. October 12th. October? Whatever that Sunday is, the 12th. So we're doing it November 12th, okay. Uh, I was kidding with the folks downstairs. One of the things, when I first came here as a pastor, I had only been an assistant pastor in California. And I preached just once 
in a while when the pastor was gone. So when I came here and then realized I had to have a morning sermon and an evening sermon, I was, I was paralyzed with fear. And I would type out my sermons word for word. And every Sunday during Sunday school hour, I'd be up in my office preaching those things over and over again. Well, as time goes on, you get a little bit better at it. And now I, I just preach off the slides. So I don't know what I'm going to say. Whatever comes up, that's what comes up. Now, the advantage of that is it flows for me. The disadvantage is sometimes you get tongue-tied. There's a word you think you want to say, and you have a brain freeze. And so when that happens, I thank you for bearing with me or shouting out shoe boxes, which I couldn't remember. So we're all excited about shoe boxes once again. We're going to get the kids involved once again. Last year, we had them paint cars that we put in the shoe boxes. We're going to do the same thing again, again this year because we really enjoy it. And so we play these videos weeks ahead of time uh, just to get us re-excited. I know you guys are, uh, but it's nice even for the people tuning in. Uh, maybe they can find a local place to do the shoe boxes, uh, but also to remind ourselves of the power of these things. So Jody picks them out first. I don't know what they are, but let's see what it is. Right now, we're in Ukraine. We've given out the 200 million shoe box in 30 years, 200 million boxes. It's hard to fathom, but it's something God has done. Every box is important. The 200 millionth is not any more important than the person who gave the first box, because every box is an opportunity to tell a child about God's love, about His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, being able to be on the other side, to deliver a shoebox to children in Ukraine, is just an absolute privilege. This country has suffered incredibly, and is, is still suffering. These children, this is just a chance to, to put the war behind them for an hour or so, and it gives us a chance just to love them. I got to actually give out the 200 million shoe box to this little girl. She was just so excited about this gift. Her favorite item was a wind-up flashlight. In such a dark time right now in Ukraine, I think that really just drew her in because it's bright, it's yellow. She was just so excited about it. When the gospel was presented, I pray that their hearts were opened. The seeds of gospel were planted in those hearts. I know that they felt love today. I know that they felt the hope and love of Jesus. And amidst the war, we know that He is powerful. He is bigger than all of this. And the fact that Operation Christmas Child is able to come into this country and continue to deliver the gospel is it's incredible. It just shows you how amazing our God is. Well, that's just amazing, simply amazing. Do you let, does that number sink in 200 million? I mean, just think of the logistics of getting these shoe boxes all the way around the world. I want to say something too about Franklin Graham. You know, I grew up in a generation where Billy Graham was revered. I mean, he was amazing. And he had these giant, giant ministries, really, giant outreaches. I remember going. I was living in Chicago, and he would do uh, down at Soldier Field, I mean, thousands and thousands of people. And I mean, that to this day, to me, is amazing. But then Franklin comes on the scene, and guys, he is, he is a hero for our generation. I mean, he really is. Because not only does he, does he do the same kind of evangelistic rallies that his father did, but he is the president of the Billy Graham Evangelical Association, and he's also the president of Samaritan's Purse. And so not only is he preaching the message in rallies around the world, but then this Samaritan's Purse, uh, you don't hear as much about him as you should because the mainstream media is afraid to mention their names. But if there's a hurricane, a tornado, when the crisis in Ukraine happened, they literally have mobile, full surgical field hospitals that they can take into any of these places. And so within hours of a, a critical event, they're loaded on a plane and they're headed there uh, and saving people's lives. And then in addition, doing this thing with the shoe boxes, 
which is reaching now, you know, 200 million. Who knows how many people have been touched by that. And so um, you need to keep praying for him. He's in his 70s. He, doesn't, he looks like he's going to be like his dad and keep going until the day God calls him home. But we're living in a day and age with fewer heroes like that. And so these ones that are doing, you need to keep praying for Butch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I can't think of ever of a president that has acknowledged uh, any kind of spiritual connection to anybody yep. other than these guys they just kind of mentioned yeah. that everybody's a person. You know, for all of the you know, Trump obviously is a flawed human being, but he talks often about that connection that he has and the faith that he found in the midst of all of these things. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And all of that came from his conversations with with Franklin and all those things. So, all right, well, let's see. Uh, I got a few memes for you, though, so let's get to those. We've got a couple that has to do with uh, uh, husbands and wives and, and those relationships. Uh, and I don't know how this guy figured this one out, but look at this one. I sometimes wonder if you hear one word I say. See, some of these you got to look at, and then it kind of sinks in, and then the waves come over, and, you know, the wife's a little uh, unhappy, and I'm not sure you heard a word that I said. Um, and th- <laughs> this one cracks me up, because this is me. Uh, at our house, I do most of the grocery shopping. Uh, not because I want to, but it's hard for Cheryl to lift all that stuff, so she, she sends me to the store to buy this stuff, and uh, somebody said this about that list, my wife making me a grocery list. <laughs> And I laughed at that because what I do is I pull up my phone and I say, what do you want me to get? And she holds it up and I take a picture of it. <laughs> and then I look through it. And then, what, I don't know if you caught it, though. It says at the top, I will still call her. <laughs> I always tell Cheryl, I go, you've got to keep that phone nearby because I'll get there and there'll be the wrong can size that aren't available and I'm not sure what to get. And so I, uh, I like that idea, though, Cheryl, if you're listening, uh, do that list for me and I like it. Uh, do you ever have those moments, I know for me it is, uh, where I, I feel I'm almost too much like my father? Anybody have that? You know, there'll be a few things, and my kids will look at me and go, Leroy! Here this lady said, just caught myself rinsing out a Ziploc baggie to reuse later because it wasn't even that dirty. It happened. I finally turned into my mother. Oh, and then, you know, we do have an emotionally damaged generation. A lot of people are going to therapy, so this person listened to his therapist. Uh, My therapist told me the way to achieve true inner peace is to finish what I start. So far, I've finished two bags of M&Ms and a chocolate cake. I feel better already. (laughs) You know, I've been kidding with Tam over the last couple months because I've gotten, as Tam worded it, I've gotten a little fluffy during the pandemic. And I'd like to get rid of some of it, but with all the stuff going on sometimes, isn't it just comforting to sit down with a piece of chocolate cake? There is just something about it. So, I mean, I I realize I can't go crazy on this stuff, but occasionally when life is overwhelming, just sitting down with a piece of chocolate cake is really encouraging. Okay, here's our religious one to end with. Uh, This is from Spurgeon. Now, sometimes I look these up so that I make sure that it's a true fact. But sometimes the statement is so good, I don't really care if Spurgeon said it, whoever said it, it's good. When asked, what is more important, praying or reading the Bible, I ask, what is more important, breathing in or breathing out? (laughs) You know, we need both of them, obviously. We need to be digging into the Word, we need to be praying to Him. And I guess, I didn't want to use the word digging into the Word. I think sometimes we get scared by that. How about just enjoying the Word? Uh, just reading some of it. Just read through the Gospels just to remind yourself. I, I look around here, listen, everybody here has been around the church a long time. And there's not a story or a verse that I turn to that you guys haven't heard before. So what you need to do sometimes is to just actually read it for the enjoyment of reading it. Or try something different. I remember a couple years ago, I bought on my phone uh, a dramatized reading of the New Testament. And it's, it's literally the NIV, but they have music in the background and they have different characters reading the parts of Jesus and Peter. And so the word comes alive and it's not like you're just 
sometimes I think, well, I got to read, so I'm going to read like Mark chapter 1. So then you read it and you get your coffee and you're all done. And then if I were to come to your house and say, what did you just read? You wouldn't even remember. So this idea of spending time in the Word and enjoying it, I think, is something important, especially for our generation when you've read, you read it so often to try to do something a little bit different. Um, another way to do it, they make these chronological Bibles uh, where you can start on a particular day and they section off the Word so that in one year that you read it and it's in the right chronological order. I have one that even has like little notes in there. That's another way just to do something different. Anything that can get you a little bit more into the Word. Well, this morning we got into the Word, and uh, we're finishing up this storm that Paul is in. We got to the point that uh, uh, there was some damage. Uh, We found out that the ship is actually destroyed. We talked about that. And then the last thing that we talked about is that God keeps His Word. Paul had been told that uh, uh, no lives were going to be lost on this ship, and so he said that to the people, and sure enough, God was true to his word, and he kept it. Tonight, we're going to begin with a wise as serpents moment. I'm, I'm looking at things, and this is all we're going to do tonight. We're not going to, you're going to have to wait till next uh, Sunday morning to get to uh, Acts chapter 28. Uh, the reason I do these things is, as Christians, I think sometimes we, we get tired of listening to what's going on in the world, and so we try to shut our minds off from it. You have to be aware of it because it's going to creep into the lives of our church kids. It's going to be creeping into the lives that are coming here uh, to to church. And so uh, this one is something that's been happening uh, recently in the public schools. So this one is the public school. It's a public school in California. And something happened in this school, and we'll explain it as we go along. There was a young lady who was having some difficulty in her life. I think one of her grandparents died. She was very discouraged. So she started saying something to her counselor about her discouragement. And somehow it comes to the conversation, well, maybe you're discouraged because you're not really a girl, you're a boy. And so the school began to allow her to identify as a boy, let her use the boys' restrooms, and never told the parents about it. You think, no, that can't be happening in our schools. It is happening in your schools, and it's happening now. And so this mom got wind of it. And so the reason this is important to us, of course, there's this verse in the Scripture. Here it is in the book of Jeremiah. You know that well. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So there is no doubt that we are created exactly specifically as God wants us. The, The transgender movement is trying to say no. And listen, they don't say these words, but what they're saying is God made a mistake, right? That's what the transgender movement is all about. I'm not who I'm supposed to be. So it is flying through our world, and it's making its way into the public schools, and this is a prime... Is it it next now? This is what's going on in the public schools. So this first clip is of the lady standing up at a school board meeting talking about what she's upset about. She couldn't believe what happened. And then after that, she ends up filing a lawsuit against them. But this one will let you know how shocked she is by what's going on. So here's the first one when she's at the school board meeting. All Aurora Regino. Oh. Did you catch how they tried to cut her off when her time was up? So guys, this is stuff that's happening in the schools now. And in some cases, then they'll start talking to the kids about taking the hormones or estrogen, depending on which way they're going. Did you you hear how how old her daughter was? Eleven. And this, you know, you say, well, uh, this is California. They're crazy out there. Listen, we've got kids in our living proof group that are identifying as the other sex. And our youth group ends at sixth grade. Already. So this isn't some off, wacky, crazy California thing. This is happening. And teachers that believe in it think that they can do what it is that they want. Yeah, this is just one example. But I love that this mother had the courage to stand up to it. Now, what happened with the lawsuit? Well, I got another clip. Uh, We're going to find out what happened with the lawsuit. But then there's also something else in there. There is a school principal in California who feels like 
that administration should tell the parents about these things, but there's a superintendent in there that's threatening to have her lose her job if, he doesn't, if she doesn't stick with the policy of not telling the parents. So this battle's not only raging between parents and teachers, it's between principals and those in power. This stuff is happening. So listen carefully. There's a, this is actually a news clip. And in the news clip, we hear from not only the mother, but we hear from the daughter. And then listen to this exchange between administration uh, members. Here we go. Jessica Conan claimed her 11-year-old daughter, Alicia, Can you believe that? The attorney general is suing a school board because the school board, oh my word, wants to tell parents if the kids are transitioning. Why do we have to know this stuff? This is going to continue, so we have to have our eyes open. We have to be open when kids are coming in here that they're going to be experiencing these things. Some of our younger families that have kids in the public school, you have got to be talking with your kids about the things that are going on. And at some point, if this thing... Guys, they're pushing this stuff. And there's going to come a time when Christian parents are going to have no choice but to take their kids out of the public school because this stuff is happening. Because you get radical teachers in there that feel it's their responsibility to protect kids from you know, us evil folks that are doing the things that we're doing here. And so this stuff has been going on for a while, but this is the first one I saw where somebody actually sued and won uh, over this kind of behavior. So you're going to see it spreading. They're not going to quit because they paid money. Because I noticed in the lawsuit, as they usually do, the school district admitted no wrong. Well, to me, if you pay somebody $100,000, you're admitting something. Uh, but they don't want to admit it. So this kind of stuff is happening, and uh, we have to be aware of it. We cannot, as Christians, just go through life and think everything is fine, because the things in the culture that Satan is working on, it affects us. It trickles in here. We're not afraid of it, but we can't just stick our ha- heads in the sand about it. Now, you know, whenever we stand up and we say this stuff is wrong, the left calls us crazy and we shouldn't be worried about that. So I got one final meme for you. I thought this one is hilarious. What would the left do if... <clears throat> what if teachers secretly started baptizing hit kids at school and hit it from parents? <laughs> What would the reaction of the left be, right? Isn't it funny that they get all upset because they think they can do these things? Well, what if Christian teachers started taking social study hours and started teaching the Bible? Boy, you'd see them screaming from the hilltop. Poor Nancy Pelosi, her head might explode on national television. (laughs) Of course, I always like to put a little humor in it because otherwise these things seem too dark. Why is it that we can rise above this stuff? Because as dark as that is, we serve the king. And the king can overcome these things, but he expects us to be aware of what's happening in this world. Parents should not just be sending their kids to school and be unaware of the stuff that's going on. Uh, That's the way that we stop saying. This lady obviously doesn't seem like a believer. She's just a parent who cares about her kids and had the willingness to stand up for it. And so we got to make sure as us as a church and parents that are in here, uh, we got to be aware of that. I'll end with this. If a kid begins to question how he was created, he'll begin to question this God that we talk about, and then he'll begin to question the sacrifice that Jesus made. It all cascades. So we got to cut it right off in the beginning. No, God loves you, and he formed you exactly as you were meant to be. So that's something to be praying about. We're going to be wrestling with it, I'm sure, during the school year. We've done it for the past couple years. We've actually had to address it, and we'll probably do the same thing this year. So just pray for us as we deal with these things, uh, um, knowing how to do it. How do you love somebody, but yet at the same time stick with what the Bible says about how we were created? So we need wisdom and uh, patience in those things. All right, Uh, obviously next Sunday morning, will be a dip into Acts 28. Uh, Let's just close up and work for it. Lord, thank you so much for this wise as serpent, gentle as dove moment. It shocks me that this stuff is happening in the public school. 
And if these are the things that we know about, we, we shudder to think about what we don't know about. How many things are going on, teachers secretly teaching kids things that are contrary to the Word of God, teaching things that parents would not want their kids to know about. We need to be aware of it so that we can help the younger parents that are coming here that will be aware of things that might happen with the Living Proof kids when they come through. I think that that message that you gave your disciples, wise as serpents, is something that just resonates throughout history. And boy, do we need to be aware of it today because Satan has done a masterful job of hiding his agenda. So help us to always be aware of what's happening so we can fight against it and protect the people that are a part of our little congregation. Watch over us now as we travel home. Bring us back together on Wednesday and then next Sunday. Lord, thank you for all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.